Okay, um, let me take that off. Okay, I'm still not 100% and I'm feeling a bit kind of off at the moment. Um, and it's a bit cold actually. Um, I don't seem to be able to keep warm at the moment. Um, I think it's because of all the pain medication I'm taking. Um, but yesterday I was talking about OCD, obsessive control, compulsive disorder. Um, so this is very controversial. It can, it is quite sensitive. What I'm going to be talking about today. Um, so if you get triggered by things like this, please be warned. Um, now I'm going to be talking about all the symptoms and the signs of people who do have OCD. Um, there are several and within them I'm going to try and explain not only what they, the symptoms of them are but what people with OCD kind of have to live with within each symptom. Um, because what I found was rather interesting and kind of surprised me somewhere along the line as well. Um, um, things that I never believed would be linked to an obsessive compulsion, you know, kind of did throw me a bit. Yeah, you know, things like, you know, so OCD comes with things like intrusive thoughts. It is a very real thing. It's a very real symptom of OCD. Um, these intrusive thoughts are unwanted and they can't stop them. They just can't stop them. But they are repeated thoughts and they are completely unwanted. And they are always intense and they cause distress. The one thing that I found is that they are very, that they are unlikely to act in a violent way. Um, despite the fact that mo a lot of the thoughts that they have are violent, so they can involve violence, they can involve harming other people, and they can include her harming themselves, things like suicide. They can involve all of those. Um, but it's highly unlikely that they will actually act in a violent way. So people with OCD very rarely act in a, very, a violent way, despite the distress that these thoughts cause them. Um, strange thing is, people with OCD, they're afraid of being... <laughs> ...child... Creeps, you know. So I think it's the best way I can put that. And what's weird is although they're afraid of being a bit creepy with children, there is absolutely no evidence to suggest or even support that thought. But they do have it and they are afraid of it. Which I did think was strange. If they are so afraid of that being, that happening, you would have thought there was some kind of evidence to support that thought. And yet there doesn't seem to be. They've never found a link to somebody with OCD and creepy people with children. No. So, yeah. So these, and I think my opinion is that because they have these really intense thoughts of violence and these thoughts of harming people, there's a possibility that they believe or think that they could go that far. And they hate themselves for it. It, it really scares the life out of them. Um, so yeah, one thing that didn't surprise me was things like uh, symptoms like symmetry and orderliness. It actually is very common and one that you really do associate with OCD, um, feeling the need to arrange objects in certain order. 
Now, we all see it. People with OCD, like they clean things, they move things, they make things nice and neat and tidy, put things in order, make sure everything on the shelf is in a nice tidy order, everything lines up. It's all nice and neat and tidy. Now, we all see this. We all... It's a very common thing that we all, like, just associate with OCD. You know, making sure everything is just nice, neat and tidy and kind of, you know, in its rightful place. Um, Thing is, they don't do this just because. They do it to avoid discomfort to themselves. And what got me was they do it so that they do not harm other people. Now, this concept that they've got these really intrusive thoughts in their heads, the, and the link that they would do something like make sure like all the books on the bookshelf are in the correct order, and or all the ornaments are lined up perfectly in size order or in colour order or you know all the paper clips are in the right places and like in color or size or whatever it never even occurred to me if i don't know if it occurred to other people that they would do this to stop themselves from harming other people you know I mean, we can all see that when they can't do it or they can't finish the task, you can see the absolute struggle it causes them. You you can see that it causes them some kind of discomfort. But the concept that it would be because they might be stopping themselves from harming others takes it to a whole new level. You know, um, and gives you something more to think about, you know. <sighs> okay. Um, and, of course, you've got symptoms like the obsessions. Now, I did kind of go over some of the obsessions that they had in the last video but and then do it again um i actually found a few more okay so we've got things like contamination which i did talk about with either bodily fluids or germs or dirt we've seen a lot of people with ocd have issues with dirt and germs and things like that um but when it comes to other reasons like the loss of control um again it does mention and did find that another obsession would be a fear of acting on an urge to either self-harm or hurt other people and it keeps coming up every time i've looked into any of it doesn't matter where i looked you know it came up over and over again that people with ocd Fear hurting other people, have this urge to hurt other people, have to stop themselves from hurting other people. So a part of their obsession is losing control and fear acting on an urge to either self-harm or hurt others. It keeps coming up and that is terrifying. And... The fact that it is such a prevalent thing that happens to people with OCD is never something I could put side by side before. You know, and there's something like perfectionism, OCD and perfectionism. Now, that is something I kind of, yeah, you, you can see it. They're, they're perfectionists, but it kind of goes a bit different bit further than that is they fear of losing things um so 
you you can kind of see that things will be put in set places things will be things will have a set home and if they're not in their exact places they will freak you know you know or they will have an intense focus you know on exacting you know things being exactly where they should be so they will focus on that so wherever they go whatever they do they will make sure things are exactly where they're meant to be and if things have been moved out of place it will they will focus on it intense it will be like an intense kind of i must move this into its rightful place you know you know you know, or there are actually, I mean, some people with OCD, you know, their obsession is they actually remember things. You know, they'll they be able to remember exactly where things go, what they do, how they work. You know, because their obsession is certain things, how they work, what they do, where they're supposed to go. I mean, that kind of thing is quite incredible, uh, I would have thought, to watch, you know. But yeah again what does keep coming up is this obsession with harming things you know a fear of being responsible for a catastrophic event they are so afraid of it they're so afraid of doing harm or being responsible for harming anybody so things like unwanted sexual thoughts you know things like religious or superstitious beliefs so they'll have concerns about offending god or stepping on cracks in sidewalks you know those kind of things are real you know you just have to could you imagine it living like that where you are so afraid that you could be responsible for something really catastrophic happening because you stepped on a crack on a floor in in on the side you know on the pavement or you've offended god or you know you've had an unwanted thought and that's led to a catastrophic event as far as you're concerned and you're responsible for it and you feel like you're responsible for it because you had a thought you know it could lead to absolute mental breakdowns. That would be a terrifying way to live. You know? And then, of course, <laughs> that's just horrifying. I would not want to have to live like that. I mean, that must be such a debilitating way to live. You know, and we haven't even got to compulsions yet. I mean, when we get to the compulsions, it's all physical that these are the physical mainly there are there are a couple of mental ones i mean mental compulsions are repeatedly reviewing an an event or if you if you have a mental compulsion so we get to the compulsions and things that can happen to somebody who has um who it, has these compulsions they're mainly physical but if it's mental you'll get things like repeatedly reviewing things like emails text messages letters any kind of correspondence in any given time any given way they will they will repeatedly that they, they will they will review it even if it's like a report for the office or a project that they're working on, they will constantly review it over and over and over and over and over again to make sure there is nothing in it that could offend anybody, that will upset anybody, that could possibly harm anybody. And they will be so afraid that that could happen, that they could make any kind of mistake that would offend or hurt or harm anybody. 
is they will have to just keep going over and over and over and over again. And when they do finally sort of admit it, submit it, send it or do whatever with it, they will still keep trying to want to review it to make sure that that person isn't offended by it, hasn't been hurt by it. You know, they will want to know that they haven't hurt or offended them by sending that report in or giving it a presentation or sending that letter or email or text message or whatever it is they've just done. It That is the only mental compulsion that I found because most compulsions are physical, things like washing. Now, washing could be physical, like their whole body. Um, they could have this thing where they need to wash like several times a day. Um, or it could be any type of washing, you know, wash the windows or whatever. I mean, cleaning comes under all of that. You have to clean like certain rooms or the whole house or just parts of rooms daily, constantly, several times a day, repeatedly. You know, or it could just be hand washing over and over and over again you know they could need to brush their teeth 25 times a day you know things like that um i have mentioned before things like monitoring the body for illnesses for symptoms and signs of them being ill even if it's just taking their temperature 25 times a day or monitoring their head for baldness or hair loss or their fingernails or you know they'll, they'll monitor their whole body to make sure there's nothing wrong with them um they will do some of them have things like they will do a repeated action um things like have you ever seen anyone with ocd I think a lot of the time we see it in movies. I don't know if you've ever watched, there was a like a detective kind of se- series um, called Monk. Um, it's high here, on here in England. Uh, I don't know. Must have been on in, in America as well. Um, he had a lot of things seriously wrong with him, but OCD was one of them. And he used to leave the house, he used to count posts. He used to clean constantly. He used to tidy everything, everything had to be straight. Um, He had many kind of physical compulsions and he couldn't stand germs. So he would wash everything. He liked to wash his hands constantly. He couldn't stand germs, couldn't stand people touching him. So he was afraid of germs. Um, you know, and that's kind of what reading half of these symptoms and signs and things kind of reminded me of. Now, I loved that series. I thought it was brilliant and you know, very cleverly done, you know. But when it comes to repeated routine activities, that is really what it kind of reminded me of. Things like getting up from a chair like 17 times and counting it because it's like a routine. Had to do it a certain amount of times. So I've got to get up from this chair 17 times and then I can relax. And every time you move into a new room or every time you go into somebody's house or you go into work or you get in the car, you have to do it 17 times. You know, oh, it's a random number, but, you know, it's kind of what you're looking at, you know, and that can apply to anything. You know, whatever that routine is, you've got a set thing that you have to do. And it kind of did remind me of that series. Um, I loved that series. It was brilliant. You know, but yeah. Um, but 
it is such a debilitating way to live and you i could never imagine living in such a small little bubble and that's exactly what you're looking at here you're looking at a condition that leaves you in a very small little bubble you know very tight small bubble because you you have to you have this need to perform certain things, do certain things, behave in a certain way, because if you don't, you can't, you, you can't do anything else. You know, you can't actually live. You know, you're in, it puts you in mental, physical discomfort. And those thoughts that are in your head, those really intense, unwanted thoughts that are in your head, make you feel like if you don't do these things or behave in this way, those thoughts that are in your head could come true. You know, and you don't want that, and you've never wanted that, so you have to do these things to stop those from happening. That's a really kind of scary way to live. Yeah. You know, but as i say there have been there has been a lot of research well i say there's been a lot of research on it there has been some research done on this there has been theory there are some theories about what actually has caused ocd but they actually don't know the real causes of it but the theories of ocd are these that there are genetic markers on it um, from what I found, um, OCD appears to run in families, which doesn't surprise me. A lot of mental health issues do. Um, they've actually, experts have studied the brain, which I did find interesting. Not many mental health conditions in where the brain has been studied for people with these issues. Um, and it has been suggested that there is a difference between the neurotransmitters um, which affect the dopamine and serotonin levels. Um, that, so people with OCD, the neurotransmitters that affect the dopamine and serotonin levels are much different than those with, that do not suffer from it. And although they don't have much detail on it, they do know that. So they there is a suggestion there that those neurotransmitters of dopamine and serotonin levels play a part in causing OCD, um, which is kind of interesting, but they don't know enough about it yet. Um, hopefully in the next few years, we'll have a lot more information. They have found, however, that there could be an autoimmune condition well, there is an autoimmune condition that causes it as well. But this comes in children from what they found. Um, things like strep A, strep throat, Lyme disease, um, the high H H1NI flu virus in children show symptoms of OCD. They Paediatricians have called this acute onset neuropsychotic syndrome otherwise known as PANS. Where they got the P from, I don't know. But it's called PANS. Children with PANS can take from 24 to 72 hours to for it to fully take effect. But, yeah, it... Um, so if, if children get PANS, for a child to get PANS, it takes up to 72, between 24 and 72 hours for PANS to fully take effect in children. Um, it is a condition of OCD. It, it's, from what I found, it is an autoimmune version of OCD um, in children. It's caused by severe and serious illnesses flu type serious illnesses from what I can gather I mean strep A and strep throat Lyme disease they're all extremely serious 
conditions. Um, and if a child gets this, what can happen is the symptoms can disappear for a little while. So they can get pans, the symptoms will come in full force. And then after a little while, they found that sometimes the symptoms dissipate and just disappear. Um, and then when they're older, they come back. Um, it doesn't always happen, but it does sometimes happen um, where the pan symptoms just appear, take effect. Their OCD is in full effect after between 24 and 40, 72 hours. And then after a while, it disappears and then returns later. But sometimes that doesn't happen and they just like become full on OCD for the rest of their lives. You know. OK, um, I am going to leave it here. My pain meds have completely worn off and I just can't do this anymore. So I'm going to have to do a part three and hopefully finish this once and for um hopefully tomorrow i will be able to um sit up a bit more and do this properly <laughs> um yeah and i shall see you all later bye